Hello, Internet. Congratulations for enduring it to part two. And um, today, uh, as you can see, I'm using a, uh, a different program than just Notepad. This program is called Notepad++. It's also a text editor, but it, um, it allows for syntax highlighting of a lot of different languages. And you'll see that um, in a minute. I'll show you that. And if you're following with me, there should be a link in the description for Notepad++. And if you're going to follow it, if you're going to follow these tutorials with the, then you would select the language Batch, and then that will allow you to use. Uh, it'll highlight the commands. So, like today, we're going to be going over the echo command. And if I were to say echo hello in Notepad, it's just plain text, so I can't see anything. It doesn't really help me. But if I were to do echo hello here, then it highlights echo blue because that's a keyword. And so, uh, yeah, that's the command we're going to be going over today because in order to make a program, which is what you'll have when you finish a batch file, is uh, you need input and output. In order to talk to the users, you'll need to use the command echo. And then echo will say hello user. And then if I save that as, and uh, I'll just save it on my desktop, hello. And then if I, oh, wait, something else important. You need pause at the end. This, this pause, uh, it keeps the window open, because if you were to just run the program, run the batch file, with just echo hello user, then it would run the echo hello user command, and then it would close, just like it did when we did the open notepad batch file in the first tutorial. So now I run hello, but I can see where I'm executing the command from, and see users Dakota desktop echo hello user, that's the command, and then right below it is the result, where it just says hello user, and then if I write pause, it waits for keyboard input, so it says press any key to continue, and I'll press any key. But that just looks sloppy. So if you want to not see where the command is echoing, where the commands are being executed from, put at echo off. And then that'll just make it look a lot more professional looking. Because you, you, now you can only see the result. Hello, user, press any key to continue. And now, now, that we, uh, have, now that we have output, we'll want input. So, in order to talk to users, use the command echo, and then anything else that's on that line is text that will be echoed out into the console. And if you want input, use the command set slash p, and then the variable name. So, I'll make the variable uh, hmm, user saying. And after user saying, you put an equal sign and then the prompt. Type a saying. And I'll add some spaces so that it, uh, they can type and it looks pretty. So now if I run this, it says, hello user, type a saying. And then I have a prompt. So if I write, or, then I press enter. You have to press enter when there's an input prompt because that sends the command. I mean, it sends the input. And then I press any key to continue. And that doesn't really do anything. And to show that it recorded, it recorded that input. What you'll need to do to uh, to echo a variable is anytime you address a variable when you're not declaring it right there, you'll need to put parentheses. I mean, uh, percent signs around it. So, and now it highlights that if you're in Notepad plus plus to show that it's a variable. So. This will say hello user, and then it'll ask ask the user to type a saying, and then it'll re-say what the user just said. So I'll run this, and then I'll say uh, you said, and I'll say no you said. So now it says you said no you said, and see it's arguing with itself, but that's not the point. See it echoes. You can use the echo command to send the input back out. And that's how you do input and output with the batch file. And in the next tutorial, we'll be going over decision statements. So 
Stay interested.